Hey there peeps, hey there film fans, it's Lucas here from Reb Noise Screen 1 and I'm here to film you in on all the latest going on in TV and film as well as streaming services of course. And we begin with a segment of course that is what's happening now. And what's happening now is good stuff, I'm pleased to say, as the US box office numbers are increasing as Godzilla vs Kong is in its third straight weekend at the number one spot and has so far grossed over $80 million in the United States and has had an amazing international rollout and is approaching $400 million worldwide, which if it was across that would be the first film in 15 months, that's right, since Bad Boys for Life did it, um, to gross over $400 million worldwide. So it looks like we are going to, it's very early days, but we are looking like we're going to get a blockbuster season of films and I'm so happy. Elsewhere in the top five, the animated features are still dominating things as the Tom and Jerry film and the Raya and the Last Dragon film are still both in the top five after two months of being in release. What's even more outstanding regarding the Godzilla vs Kong numbers is that the film is also available to stream for no extra charge to HBO Max subscribers. So people are still choosing to come out in quite a full force in the United States um, to go and watch the film in cinemas, which I think is quite extraordinary. Obviously, I've had mixed opinions on that film myself. I think obviously they could have just released the fight scenes to be fair on YouTube and that would have been suffice. But hey ho, it's a good movie I guess to see in the cinema with all those effects and the sound and you know, being around other people, I guess, watching a film must be like a novelty nowadays. Um, however, it hasn't really faced much competition at the, at the box office, as I mentioned. The animated features have dominated during this pandemic season. However, this coming week, the release of Mortal Kombat will hopefully put an end to that, and we could see an actual battle for the top spot in the US. Um, watch this space for more. So now, what's happening next? So obviously UK cinemas were still scheduled to open on May 17th, pending the government roadmap. And please check your local area as some cinemas may open past this date, including some of the smaller cinemas. And if you are in Scotland, Wales, Northern Ireland, there are different rules that apply. But in England, it's looking likely on May 17th will be the day film fans will be able to go back to their local multiplexes, so cross fingers on that. We have had a lot of shuffles, to be fair, um, go ahead with this. So Top Gun Maverick and Jackass 4 have been pushed back to later in the year, to November and October respectively. While the seventh Mission Impossible film, originally scheduled to be released later this year in November, has been pushed back to summer of 2022. This therefore means that the eighth Mission Impossible film that was um, filmed back to back with the seventh will be released in 2023, believe it or not. So still a while for anyone who wants to see the new adventures of that franchise. Um, Conjuring The Devil Made Me Do It is brought forward to June, so that will join A Quiet Place too. so if you're a horror fan, June's looking like a good month so far, June's a new Halloween it seems. And Hotel Transylvania and Peter Rabbit 2 have both moved forward a few weeks. I believe Peter Rabbit 2 must have been the film that has hopped around. Just wait for that applause, for that joke, the laughter. I think that's enough. Um, it's hopped around release dates quite a lot during this pandemic season, but it's looking like, as of now, it is going to be released in June. So June's looking like a big month so far. But before all that, it's all about the Oscars. And the Academy Awards are taking place later this month, and I shall have a special video coming up on this channel. Don't forget to check out my BAFTAs video that I did, um, where I went down some of maybe the kind of frustrating things about the award ceremonies, and more will be featured when I come and talk about the Oscars. However, if you are after watching some of the best picture nominees, here's a few that you can watch in the United Kingdom at present. You've got Sound of Metal, which is led by Riz Ahmed, and that is on Amazon Prime. You've got Trial of the Chicago 7, which is on Netflix, as well as Mank, which is leading in the number of nominations for this year's ceremony, and that's also on Netflix. Promising Young Woman just dropped on Sky Cinema. Now, the next two films you have to pay extra for Judas and the Black Messiah that's on Sky Store Premier £15.99 and Minari which is streaming on several services but at a paid price of £9.99 um, but I found it on Apple TV so you know you can watch those but you do have to pay an extra fee just to warn you the favourite to win Best Picture at least seems to be Nomadland the Chloe Zhao film 
um, which stars Francis McDormand, already obviously a two-time Academy Award winner, is looking likely to pick up the best picture. However, it's not going to be available to stream over here via Disney Plus until after the ceremony has taken place on April the 30th. And The Father, if you're looking forward to that, that film starring Sir Anthony Hopkins in the leading role, who he won the BAFTA recently as a Best Actor for this, that's not going to be out until the 14th of June here. So long times after these um, ceremonies have taken place. But hopefully, you know, you get a chance to watch some of the other films. And don't forget to check out the BAFTA video that I did, and I will be doing stuff on the Academy Awards as we get closer to that date. So now, what's happening on the small screen? We start first with Disney Plus, and there's a lot of new series streaming on it. One of them, which is off to a flying start, is Mighty Ducks Game Changers. That's the series that is based on the Mighty Ducks film franchise from the 1990s, which does feature Emilio Estevez returning to his uh, role in that franchise, as well as a whole new cast of characters, and deals with the fact that the game has changed in the modern age. It's currently streaming with new episodes dropping every single Friday. Um, another series which seems quite similar to that is a Star original series called Big Shot, which is about a basketball coach who is made to teach female a female team of basketball players, and that is also streaming on Disney+. Plus. It seems very similar to Mighty Ducks, though. Um, so I don't know whether it was the best timing releasing them both at the same time. Maybe would have waited a few weeks. But it's good to see new content coming forward. And of course, don't forget, this Friday we'll have the season finale of Falcon and the Winter Soldier. I've had mixed thoughts on this so far. I felt the pacing was very slow. The character development was not very good in the first kind of half of the series. It has tipped up its gear in the last couple of episodes. I'm hoping for a good send-off as we look forward to Loki and the MCU returning to cinemas finally um, later this year, Black Widow. Elsewhere on Netflix, the number one film at the moment is Love and Monsters. This is about a monster apocalypse. Looks like a kind of like their answer, I guess, to Godzilla vs. Kong in the cinemas. So we're after more kind of monster madness. Um, then please stream that on Netflix. And a new sci-fi drama film called Stowaway will drop this Thursday in the UK on Netflix. And that looks like to be the new kind of space age hit. And now we look finally to Apple TV, who are releasing several new documentaries ahead of Earth Day this Thursday. Um, but first, you've got Earth at Night in Colour. That's narrated by MCU star Tom Hiddleston. Meanwhile, he's MCU comrade Paul Rudd narrates Tiny World and of course they've got David Attenborough on board for this as his acclaimed documentary The Year Earth Changed is streaming on the service now and I'm going to end this with this note this year marks the 70th year that's it, 7-0, the 70th year in the broadcasting career of Sir David Attenborough. He is the only broadcaster to win BAFTA awards for programs produced in black and white, in colour, in HD, 4K and 3D. And he's released content, like I said, for 70 years. He's a national treasure. I know he didn't really like that term, but he is. He's a national treasure and I think long live kind of the king of documentaries, Sir David Attenborough. But yeah, look, that's kind of everything I've got to say this time. Next time we will be talking, I said, about the Oscars, about the Academy Awards, and about the end of the awards season. Hopefully we'll be having some kind of more UK-based news when it comes to release dates, and be thinking about what will be the first film to top the UK box office, <laughs> to film to top the UK box office since cinemas closed late last year. Until then, I've been Lucas. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe, and check out the other channels that we provide here at Rev Noise. Until then guys, I'll catch you next time. Ta-ra for now.